now that we have a metadata record in Dublin Core, what do we do with it? So, like I said, the purpose of metadata in general is resource discovery and to help users find things that they want, right? And a lot of discovery is done on the web using search tools like search engines. So you might want to have your metadata record on the web and lots of metadata records are on the web. Um, so what that means probably will be to translate your metadata record into HTML. So let's look at how that is done now. Happily, HTML already has built into it functionality to allow you to embed metadata in a web page using the meta tag. So the meta tag has two attributes, name and content. And those correspond to element and value, as we'll see in a moment. Now, anything that's in a meta tag will not be displayed in a web browser, right? And the reason for that is that the meta tags are in the header of a web document and not in the body. But that data is in there and a web crawler or other algorithm that's programmed to do so can extract that data. Let's look at this document here, which is the W3C's specification for HTML5. And you'll notice that this is about metadata in HTML. And one of the items in the table of contents here is standard metadata names. So let's take a look at that and what you notice is that there are a few standard pieces of metadata that the W3C says, you know, are standard for use with the meta tag. And they are pretty much what you would expect. There's author, there's description, there's keywords, there's generator, which is the application that you used to uh, write your HTML, right? fairly standard stuff. If I wanted to create an HTML page out of, for example, these slides here that you're looking at, they might have these meta tags, right? The element is author, the value is Jeffrey Pomerantz, so that gets translated to meta name element name, content, and then the value for that element, right? Meta, element, value. HTML doesn't specify what elements and values you can use or are allowed to or not to use um, in creating meta tags. So you can create any names and content that you want. You can just make up your own elements and values and that can get as ridiculous as you like. No one is going to actually search for those elements and values, of course. No one is going to look for my cat's name, right? But you could include those meta tags in there if you were so inclined. But let's go back to only the actually serious ones here. And author, title, language, etc. turns into this format when you are trying to represent it in Dublin Core. <clears throat> right? Author is not the name of the element in Dublin Core. It's creator. And so it's represented like this. And this is the standard format for representing Dublin Core metadata in a meta tag. DC dot element name, creator, title, language, etc., is 
the value that you give to the name attribute, and then what you would assign for the value of the element is given to the content attribute, right? So DC title is the title of these slides, DC creator is me, etc. Notice that there is one element value pair per meta tag, right? And also remember the dumb down principle. If you don't need an element, you just leave it off. And if you, if you need an element more than once, you repeat it with different values. So I could, for example, create a, you know, DC dot, dot contributor DC dot contributor meta tag and repeat that as many times as I want to include the names of all of the very many people at the University of North Carolina who are helping me with these videos who are contributing to the creation of these videos so let's go back to our Mona Lisa example again so um, as I said before, the meta tags are in the document header and not in the document body. But the important thing is that what you see is the same data that we looked at in, in the previous video. You've got meta, name, dc.title, element, value, Mona Lisa. DC.creator element value Leonardo da Vinci and this particular format with the birth and death date is um, a controlled vocabulary the format dictated by a controlled vocabulary from the Library of Congress and we'll talk about that later etc element value now let's look at a web page that has some actual Dublin Core metadata in the HTML. This is the uh, introductory page for the Darwin Core, which is a great name, I think. It's a metadata schema that is obviously based on the Dublin Core, but is used for providing information about biodiversity. Um, so let's look at the source for this page and what you get is this big block of metadata in the header right and you've got <clears throat> name dc title darwin core right dc subject biodiversity standards etc dc creator and all of these contributors etc right so you could if you were so inclined, design a search engine to allow you to search for give me everything that, you know, Marcus During has written. And because he's listed as a contributor, you could use the contributor field or creator field as a filter for authorship. And you could reasonably construct a search that said, author equals Marcus During and get everything that, that, that he wrote. Also notice that we have a couple of things in here that are not standard Dublin Core. Right? DC modified, DC date accepted, DC access rights. Right? These are not your standard 15 Dublin Core elements. So that brings us to extending Dublin Core beyond just the basic 15 elements.